was supposed to be the start of a new home and a new family. My wife, she was like, over the moon. Prior to getting the key, like, she was really counting down to the days. My dream is just to live happily, definitely peacefully, let the kids have a normal life. But instead of the dreams that the family was hoping for, things turn ugly really fast for Shafi and Aida. Our new neighbour came in about three months ago. From then on, my life and my family life actually has been such a tremendous state of panic, anxiety, trauma. The wall. Shafi and Aida claim the neighbour pounds violently on the walls at night, waking the family. This family isn't the only one. In 2017, the Housing and Development Board said they received about 3,500 complaints about bad neighbours. And social media is filled with videos like these. With close to 10 disputes lodged every single day, I'm on a mission to find out what is causing these disputes and what we can do when we're caught in the middle of one. Neighbour disputes typically only make the news after they have been broiling on for many years or at least when one party takes a dramatic action. Ida's family has been embroiled in a dispute with their neighbour for three months. They are desperate for help. This is the wall that he likes to bang unexpectedly. Uh -huh. During the day, during the night. And how many times a night does this banging happen? It could be five, it could be more than that, but unexpected times. He will use an object, he will bang the wall. I can't have a good night's sleep in this room anymore. I keep hearing the bangs unexpectedly. And do you still sleep here anymore? No. At night, we pull out the bed, go out at the living room, so all of us will sleep outside. The alleged constant banging also scares their children aged 7, 3 and 1. My first one is already really traumatized. By going through all those things, he's, he has to go seek a psychologist's help and he has anxiety attacks. There's no way around this situation. HDB. I approached the HDB about the family's case. The board said together with other agencies, they're working with the parties involved to try and reach an amicable solution. But, it added, it would take time before a resolution is reached. The Housing and Development Board is one of the first places residents turn to to voice their grievances about neighbour issues. But the HDB is primarily a property developer. So some residents turn to the town council instead, which is the estate manager. But the town council only imposes rules for common spaces like corridors and void decks, not what happens inside the flats. In July this year, Shafi and Aida made a police report but even that didn't really help because there are no legal decibel limits when it comes to sounds from residential homes. In order for any action to be taken, Aida and Shafi need to prove that their neighbour's noise is a nuisance in court. And that is going to take time and it's going to cost money. According to the Community Mediation Centre, the most common types of neighbour disputes are harassment, 
followed by abusive words and unacceptable conduct. Coming in at the top, noise. Michael Wee is a noise control expert. He has spent the past 30 years working on noise monitoring. I'm meeting him to find out why noisy neighbours get on our nerves. We are sometimes not conscious about how much noise we actually generate. Children playing can be a very wide range of noise. Sometimes a board game where it can be quite quiet, maybe 65, 70 decibels. Or you can be playing a chasing game where you're running around, jumping around, screaming. When you're... So that can be going up to about 85 to 90 decibels. So it's actually really quite noisy, our everyday activities. But what's more important is the perception of that noise. Let me show you an example. Okay. Uh, so this is a, a device that is generating a calibrated sound, sound level. So I want you to stand over here and listen to the sound that's being generated. Okay. So this is a white noise. This sounds like the ocean to me. It's compared to this. This is a speech intelligibility test voice. So now if I'm trying now to speak to you, to how do you feel when I'm trying to say something to you? And I'm not actually listening to you anymore. Although both these noises are actually generating, if you measure them, they are the same at 62 decibels. Seriously? Yes, they are the same. This is a speech intelligibility test voice that is meant to be used... However, one affects you more than the other. Yes. Because one of them is actually exciting frequencies that are close to the human speech frequencies. And that's what you're most sensitive to because we communicate using those frequencies. Right, so I'm in direct competition to it. So it turns out the noises made by our neighbours tend to irritate us, not necessarily because they are loud, but because they impair our communication with others. So let me show you another source of noise. This okay. is called tonal noise. This is the same sound pressure as the other two. I feel almost like vertigo, like I want to yes. faint That's or something. Right. So it's only exciting a specific frequency and that frequency irritates us. So we have that sometimes in some mechanical equipment, like an aircon compressor. Actually, my neighbours the other day complained because our air-conditioned unit is so old, the whole night just goes <laughs> yes. at this one frequency. That's right. And it caused us issues. Yes. One more thing I'd like to show you is how ambient or background noise affect how we perceive sound. All this time that we're doing the recording, we have been actually putting sound pressure into this place to actually artificial increase the sound pressure. Really? Yes. So right now we're going to turn it off. Okay. okay. And you, you're going to realise that it's a much quieter environment. Yes. Okay. Now, when I subject you to this, you will notice that this is even louder than it was before, although it is actually the same sound source. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <Yeah. laughs> it's more cutting. Yes. Because Everything is more cutting. That's why there's a difference at night. That is right. Because at, at night, there's less noise pollution. That's right. But during the day, there are all these Activities, others. Activities. Yeah. We want to maybe... Um, so noises don't even have to be loud. But by agitating certain frequencies, different kinds of noises can evoke strong reactions in certain people. Come and find a call. I want to experience for myself what Shafi and Aida are going through. So I've asked to stay the night at their place. I've discovered that one of the main culprits of disputes between neighbours is noise something which Aida and Shafi have been dealing with over the past three months. I want to know how bad it can get, especially in the dead of the night. So I've asked for a sleepover. This is my kitchen. So this is the toilet. All right. OK, this is the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You can actually unpack. OK, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Before turning in, I set up cameras and noise monitoring devices around the room. So, 
the family has just gone to sleep and they're sleeping in the living room and I'm in the master bedroom. Let's see how tonight goes. Gonna get into my pajamas and get into bed. I'm slowly easing myself to sleep, but soon I hear someone knocking against the bedroom wall. And close to midnight, I hear this. provoke me and it did. I feel very vulnerable. Um, I haven't had a good night's sleep. I keep getting woken up but those two bangs definitely put me out of my comfort zone and I'm not feeling comfortable tonight. I can understand now the strain on Shafi and his family. I want to help Shafi and Ainda find a solution to their ordeal. The Community Mediation Centre under the Ministry of Law was set up in 1998 to handle disputes between neighbours in an amicable manner. Krishna V is an expert mediator who has been helping resolve neighbour disputes for the past 21 years. Mr Krishna, why should the affected parties seek the help of a mediator? The, the presence of a mediator helps them because it guides them, allowing the parties whom to speak, whom, whom to answer. Sometimes they may come to a deadlock. Then it is used sometimes the mediator will have a private session with them and they help them with some suggestion. Look, what about looking at this issue in this way? Sometimes the, during the mediation, they will come with some very good ideas among themselves which you can't think of. What is the percentage of cases that go through mediation that eventually find a resolution, what's that percentage? Our story is about 70% when successful rates, which in my opinion, I think is quite high. So how about the 30% then? They can resolve court proceedings. So I'm learning that mediation can be a powerful tool to resolving disputes, especially between neighbours. I'm wondering if Aida and her family would be open to having a session of mediation with their neighbour to hopefully resolve their dispute. I'm giving Shafi a call. Hi, well, I just spoke with the Community Mediation Centre and they suggested that you and your neighbour go for mediation. What do you think? I don't really see mediation as a viable solution. Okay, wait, hold on. Why do you think mediation won't work? I mean, as much as I really want to mediate with him, I think, unfortunately, that me and my neighbour is not on the same, you know, wavelength. For mediation to work, both parties must believe that they can reach an amicable solution, which isn't always the case, as I've just heard from Shafi. Yet, with every passing day, living with a bad neighbour can be torture. The residents from this block in another part of the island have been terrorised by one particular household for close to a decade. Until that said household finally moved out. Is that what it takes for a resolution to be reached? I want to ask you some questions about a neighbour that lived on this floor that caused some trouble before.
，哇，整天跟我们泼水，通通都坐到外流的。后来哈，我们整天都狂被淋，浑身不。What was it like for you to experience something like that? 整天都都死心塌跳蛋了哈。How long did it last? 八九年了，真真的过八九年了，没有一天的安乐。But is the problem always with the neighbour? Or could it be the way our flats are built? I think it's the wall. Hello. Hi. Earlier, I spoke to Madam Lau. She lived next to a neighbour who splashed liquids at her front door for close to 10 years. One option is to move out. But is that easier said than done? I'm meeting housing agent Janet Ao. I know she's been trying to sell a flat at this estate in the western part of Singapore for a number of years. Okay, so this is the unit that um, the owner has been trying to sell for a couple of years mm -hmm. and uh, he's been affected by this opposite label who right. has kept quite a bit of the stuff at the common area. Okay. He's put all of his items outside on the corridors. Yes. And he's kind of claimed it as his own space. So how did the problems caused by this neighbour um, affect the sales of this flat? Basically, there aren't any takers. You see, the thing here is when buyers come to see a property to buy, they don't just look at the interior. They also survey the surroundings, the type of neighbours they're going to live in because this is like an everyday affair, yeah. right, from then on. And they are faced with a neighbour situation like this. It will actually raise concern among the potential buyers about whether it's going to be a livable environment for them in the future. Let me show you okay. something. You can see from the past transacted prices that's been recorded before the owner started selling, the market value is around 420s to about 450 range. So the owner is unable to ask at such a price and he had to ask at about 330, about 360 range in order to you know, um, attract buyers. Wow, that's a real significant drop. Yes, it is. How long has this owner been trying to sell the flat? About two years. Two years? Yes. And they still haven't been able to sell it? Yes. Wow. Uh, I was starting to think that if you had a problematic neighbour, then you just move out and it's easy. But I'm really starting to realise it's not that easy to just move out and sell the flat. Correct. Because he can't get it sold, he's unable to move to another replacement home. Right. So therefore, he's stuck. So moving out is not always an option. Yeah. And even less so when you have a family of five, like Shafi and Aida. I've been trying to have a word with Shafi's neighbour. He went out. Okay. I finally managed to get him on the phone. He declined an on-camera interview, but agreed to let me share his views. So I've just gotten off the phone with Shafi's neighbour and he apologises if he had made any noise saying that it was unintentional and just a result of his lifestyle. But more importantly, he's decided to move out and sell his flat upon HDB's pending approval and hopefully this brings some closure to Shafi and Ida's case. But does the problem always lie with the neighbour? Haslina Hamza moved into this flat in Pongol four years ago. So Lin, since living here, what are the noise issues you've experienced in this flat? Knocking, dragging the cupboard, and then we're talking, whispering, like, throw, I mean, like throwing things, can hear the door. The most is like, it's really irritating me is most is the, the, the doors. You know when your neighbor on top, your neighbor below, right? When they are closing the door, the impact, the pressure. You can get, you know, heart attack, you know. When, when the door is like, boom, like they, you know, they were doing something, suddenly, boom. So why do you think you can hear these noises loudly here? I think it's the wall. The wall? Yeah. Because like, my husband drilled the, the wall. It's not like last time the house didn't flat. It's really like food. So my husband said like, the wall is like empty. 
easy to go through. You can hear the song hollow. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, I'd love yeah. to, to understand how okay. hollow this you is. You hear? <gasps> that is literally nothing in this wall. Yeah, empty is just this is only this area, right? But there's a few and oh um, even God. here. Hazlina believes the sounds are amplified in newer HDB flats because the walls are thinner. So I'm putting this theory to the test. I'm pitting Hazlina's 4-year-old Pongo flat against my friend's 35-year-old flat in Tuapayo. I'm getting help from acoustic consultants. They'll measure how much noise can pass through the walls and ceilings from one unit into another in both flats. We will know in a few days if there's any difference between the two. Three days later, the moment of reckoning. So Bruno, what do the tests tell us? So we did two types of tests. Yeah. One is called an STC test, in which we measure the noise traveling from one room to the other through a wall. And then the other test is an IIC test, which we actually measure the sound traveling through the slab and then to the room downstairs. The result is actually quite consistent in between the old HDB and the new HDB. Okay, so they're almost the same then? Yes, they, they match quite well. Mm, this confuses me a little bit. Why is it some people say that living in the new flats is actually noisier than living in the old flats? So one of the factors behind that is because some of the newer developments, the units are smaller and the development itself is more densely packed, as opposed to the older developments where the units are bigger and not, not as dense. So what happens is now, when living in close quarters, you're going to be able to listen to your neighbour more easily. Another situation that may aggravate the issue is because sometimes in newer developments, the surrounding area is not totally developed yet. So, especially during night time, any sound that your neighbour makes is going to pick up your attention, even though the actual noise is not high. So, walls amplifying sounds? Not really. Turns out, we could be just more densely packed these days. So how do I deal with a neighbour from hell? Well, I could try and find an amicable solution through various third-party agencies, but when the dispute is about noise, that's going to be difficult because... You can easily find out the permissible noise levels for factories and construction work in your residential area, but when it comes to your neighbours, it's often discretionary. Perhaps it would be better for everyone if there were clear noise limits. That would help us and agencies take quick action before things get out of hand. <laughs>